Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Sarasota, Florida. I'm Pastor Ashley Nichols. It's great to have you here today on the second Sunday of Advent, all, all those in person and also those of you who are watching online. It is great having you here today. Right after worship, we will have our congregational meeting. Um, so members, we ask you to stay seated. We'll say go in peace and all of that, but don't go too far. Um, coffee will be after, um, and so we'll have that right after worship. Um, also, remember the poinsettia form that um, we need these turned in by next Sunday so we can make sure all the names are in the bulletin for Christmas Eve. And also want to keep um, prayers, especially Tennessee. We know that there's many have heard about a, a tornado that went through that was right basically where Susie Scholl just moved. Um, so went right past her house. Um, she's, um, there's some damage on the house, um, but she's fine. Power's been going in and out. Um, and so, but she's doing all right. And, but we pray for all those that were affected by that storm in Tennessee. Uh, want to give a big thank you and for those who helped out with a visit with Santa yesterday. It was a wonderful event. Uh, Fellowship Hall was full of kids and families and uh, probably over 50 kids attended and it was a joy. So thank you to um, all that participated and we always appreciate Santa being there because we, we know it's a joy for Santa as well to see all the kids. So the next announcements I have are for Rick, from Rick. Good morning. So we have three birthdays this week, and tomorrow, Monday, is our new day in history. Judy Roberts was born on this day. <laughs> Thursday, it's Sandy Choquette, and Friday, it's Tyler Riley. And John, can you start us off with happy birthday? Happy birthday. So we hope you all have a blessed day each and every day. Community Meals had 46 people attending this past Tuesday and served 94 meals. And the food pantry served 98 families yesterday, consisting of 197 individuals, which includes 29 children under, the 18, under 18 years of age. And so we'd like to continue to thank all the volunteers that give of their time to keep these things up and running. Pastor Ashley's e-blast this week tells us a story about Santa and if he's real or not. A story that tells us to never stop believing. So thank you, Pastor Ashley. And again, we had great fun yesterday with the visit with Santa, but I would like to give everybody a round of applause for participating and making it such a great event. Thank you again. And then, of course, Making Joyful Noise by John Ferreira. A new one is online every Thursday. And thank you, John, for doing that. And some ministry opportunities this week. I believe, I believe we're here doing Sunday school today. So anyways, and, and, and during the fellowship uh, today after the service, community meal at 5.30 on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have property at 8 a.m., Bible study at 4, soup supper at 6, and Advent service at 7. And then, of course, bells are practicing at 545 and choir following the service. On Thursday, we have food pantry bagging at 930 and distribution on Saturday at 9 a.m. And St. Paul prayer Zoom titled Talking with God Thursday at 4 p.m. And part of the upcoming and ongoing, they're back. Oink, moo, cluck, ba, buzz. The good gifts ornaments are displayed on the Christmas tree in the fellowship hall. 
and you can choose one or more in ornaments to donate to the ELCA World Hunger Good Gifts Program. And this year, as it happened last year, your donation will be matched dollar for dollar up to $1,000 by an anonymous donor. So here's a sample of what the ornaments will include. Barnyard animals such as cows, sheep, goats, chicks, and piglets. Honeybees, water jugs, mosquito nets, vaccinations, and more. And so please see Cindy in the fellowship hall after the service and get yourself a gift. So thank you for sharing and helping to make this Christmas a little brighter for others. And mark your calendars for not this Monday, but next Monday, the 18th. Hope Seeds will be filling seed packets from one to three. Come when you can and leave when you must. And we fill several thousand small bags with seeds, which will be sent to several countries so families can grow their own food. And now it doesn't get any worse. Why didn't Rudolph get a good report card? Why? Because he went down in history. <laughs> what do you call a shark that delivers toys at Christmas? Santa Jaws. Oh. How did Scrooge win the football game? The ghost of Christmas past. What do you get if you eat too many Christmas ornaments? Tinselitis. <laughs> what do you call a search engine that sings the best Christmas songs? Michael Google. Oh. And last, thank goodness. Yay. Why did the gingerbread man, what did the gingerbread man say after all the cookies were eaten? It's so hard to, to bake new friends. Well, any other announcements for today? If not, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prayer.
Please rise as you are able. It doesn't matter whether or not you have faith, or whether you are cynical or despairing, hope-filled or hopeless. What matters to God is simply that you are here. We are entering the time of Advent, the preparation for Christmas. Advent reminds us that if God is to be born again in the most ordinary parts of our world and our lives, that we are called to prepare for it. We are called to make a place in our lives where love might be born. Together, let us practice being ready in faith that Jesus Christ will come. We take time today for silence and reflection to prepare our hearts for Jesus. Let us make our confession together. We confess, gracious God, that we have not always turned to you for guidance. At times we have allowed the world's time to dominate your time. Forgive us our sins of hurriedness and impatience. Forgive us when we have slumbered instead of remaining alert, waiting and watching for you. Forgive us for allowing the world's fears to become our fears. Shine upon us this Advent season, so that we may be restored unto you. Guide us into your time as we call upon your name. Hear our prayers and give us life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. With a heart full of mercy and compassion, God saves us and forgives us all our sins. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us, and the light of the Holy Spirit guides our feet into the ways of peace. Amen. Today, we are going to have the Massey family lighting our Advent wreath. So we have, I want to make sure we always get to know our families. We have Kellen up here, who's already been acolyte, and Missy, and... Ryan and Jordan and Rob and sometimes Missy also goes by Kristen so that's her given name so we uh, like to use that as well so they will light two blue candles for our advent wreath as we sing O Come O Come Emmanuel
Let us pray together. Praise to you, O God, who gives us courage to start again. You fasten righteousness around your waist and baptize with the Holy Spirit's fire. Bless us as we mirror your mighty fire in these simple flames, and teach us to mirror your justice in the paths we prepare. We ask that peace abound until none hurt or destroy over all the earth. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is Blessed Be the God of Israel. hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for a special music from our St. Paul Singers.
for the kids' message. So you guys are getting lots of walking back and forth. You have a little less walk. But we're going to keep standing up because I bet you guys remember what we did last week. Do you remember what we did last week? Mm, do you remember we were jumping up here? Mm -hmm, the jumping jack. Do you remember what we spelled out? Say that really loud. Hope. H O P E. So that was week one. So we got a week two coming up. And up on the screen will be the next word. Mm -hmm. Love will be one of the weeks, but this next one is peace. So what do you think of when you think of peace? World peace, yep. Yeah. Everyone getting along? Maybe not getting everyone not maybe not everyone getting along, but everyone just cooperating with each other. Everybody cooperating, respecting one another and yep. Because it can be kind of complicated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How about you, Jordan? Same thing as that. Mm-hmm. Just better wording, you know. Mm-hmm. You guys have good dittos. That was what I often use. Ditto. So yeah, peace. In in the Hebrew word, it's shalom. Can you say that? Shalom. Shalom. And then salam. Salam. And so a lot of times we'll hear shalom, especially in church. And so it's that peace. So we can get little bits of peace here and there. Kind of, when I think of peace, I kind of think of uh, maybe relaxing, oh, just taking a deep breath, thinking, oh, even that, oh, Jesus loves me, type of thing. But you know what? There's another way of peace. Because if we do jumping jacks, that's not always, right, peaceful, because that's kind of strenuous. So there's peace that kind of gets us to work, too. That we, that peace that we work for and that we strive for, like that cooperating and getting, to, getting along with one another. So there's a lot of meanings for peace. But I figured let's do some jumping jacks. I need to get a little woken up here and get our legs working. So we're going to do the, just like we did hope, we'll do peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. So I'm going to turn my mic off so we can jump and my microphone won't go all crazy. <laughs> So let's pray a prayer for peace. So let's pray. So to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. And help us, and help us to, continue to continue to strive for peace. To strive for peace. In any way we can. In any way we can. Help us, help us to always experience. To always experience your love, your love, so we can show it to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. So we will continue with our scripture readings for the second Sunday of Advent. Thanks, Frank, for being our scripture reader. Good morning. Good morning and Merry Christmas. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, 40th chapter. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, 
yet she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. Not even ground shall be level in the rough places of plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, and the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, say to the cities of Judea, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 85. You will read it responsibly by verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and allowed out all our sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those that turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall go down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God. A reading from the second letter of Peter, third chapter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is slow about his promise, as some think of closeness, but is patient with you, not wanting to any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading love, lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. In accordance with this promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for the gospel acclamation, Emmanuel.
Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare for you the way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Comfort, O comfort my people, Isaiah announces from God. What tender words of comfort and encouragement. Many of us at this time long for such words to fall like gentle showers upon us. Many of us ache for comfort, rest, reassurance, and encouragement. It fits so well with our week of peace. Doing jumping jacks for peace, on the other hand, almost seem contradictory to me. Because when I think of peace, I don't think of strenuous exercise. I think of comfort, like the first reading in the first verse. But if we continue reading that scripture, it doesn't end with just comfort, but also work to do. The prophet Isaiah says that a way must be prepared for the coming of the Lord. From one verse to the next, we are given both comfort and work to do. Comfort and jumping jacks. <laughs> and at the end of our reading from Isaiah, we hear that the coming of the Almighty will be expressed in the tenderness of the shepherd who gathers up the vulnerable and carries them if necessary. It is not one thing or the other, it is both, both comfort and challenging work. Our God is both almighty and asks us to help prepare a way. But what do we prepare for? The early church mothers and fathers spoke of a threefold coming of God. The historical coming of God in the particular person of Jesus, the future coming of God and the fulfillment of all things, and third, the coming in each and every age. The advent of God in our own life and in our own times. And it's that third one that I tend to focus on because that's how I think we can make a difference in this world now. Yes, the coming of Jesus back over 2,000 years ago set the stage for what we experience now. And we need that history and to understand it but only for the sake of being able to understand how God comes to us now. Even the future coming of God at the fulfillment of all things isn't my focus because that's just an easy answer. God wins. But it's the third coming of God, the one in each and every age in our time and our lives that makes a difference now and into the future. And that, so that's the one we prepare for, not just in Advent, but every day. Yet preparing can sound so intimidating, like it has to be something devout or dramatic or deliberate. But as one scholar wrote, if you want God and long for union with God, yet sometimes wonder what that means or whether it can mean anything at all, you are already walking with the God who comes. If you are at times so weary and involved with the struggle of living that you have no strength even to want God, yet are still dissatisfied that you don't, you are already keeping Advent in your life. 
If you have ever had an obscure intuition that the truth of things is somehow bigger, greater, more wonderful than you deserve or desire, that the touch of God in your life stills you by its gentleness, that there is a mercy beyond anything you could ever suspect, you are already drawn into the central mystery of salvation. So see that God is already there. God is there. God has always been accompanying God's own creation and reaching out in mercy and tenderness, always correcting and encouraging, challenging and enticing through prophets and priests, kings and servants, faithful handmaids and warriors, and now most fully in the person of Jesus. We who are wearied or confused, distracted or divided, can hear again words of comfort and challenge so that we are reminded how lovingly we are sought and kept company. It's not about what we do or don't do to prepare. For we do not conjure up God by our good intentions or even by the fervor of our desire. There is no need. God is already here in our DNA, in the forgotten recesses of our hearts, in the word, in the sacraments, in you, in me. God is not a figment of our imagination, which we can fan into a three-dimensional fire when we need a little reassuring warmth or excitement. We are the outworking of God's imagining and desire and outpouring of God's relentless grace. That's the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We hear in our gospel story the first line of the gospel of Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's like an introduction, a title to the story that's going to be. Because, well, that's just the beginning of Jesus' story. His life, his death, his resurrection, is all the Gospel of Mark, but then we are the next chapter. We become the visible sign of the invisible grace. This season of Advent, let it be the beginning of the good news of hope arising and peace experiencing. And a spoiler alert for the next couple of weeks, that joy will be our living and love our outpouring. Thanks be to God. Amen. I always like to leave you with a reflection question during Sunday school or also just during the week. What is your favorite way to speak about what God is doing in your life? Do you speak of hope, of peace, of joy, of love? Or is there another word that you use? We continue with our hymn of the day, Hark the Glad Sound.
with hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of rest restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach the church to be bold in revealing the truth and word and beauty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth wherever lost is revealed, bring wholeness to the earth and all its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, the remedy leads to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving, all who know depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or bad. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Be especially with those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer chain, for the names listed in our bulletin this morning for the prayers upon the community prayer cross, for law enforcement officers and health care workers, for Ukraine, for the Middle East, for Tennessee, for all victims of natural and human-made disasters, for St. Paul members, especially Blake, Kendall, Mark, Nicole, and Tyler Riley, Hank and Judy Roberts, and Colleen and John Ryan. For our preschool teachers and students, especially Deborah, Roman, Samantha, Nola, Chloe, and Camilo, Ms. Katie, and Missouri. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting this season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting you in the land of souls and treatment. Protect the respected parents. Wash with those who need your bedside vigil. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Lifeless memory of saints from ages past, and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await in our new heaven and new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. And also Please take some time to share God's peace with one another. And there are some guests that are joining us at the door, so if an usher can please let them in. Thank you. This is the time, our, well, first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about our offering. The, 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 the offering plates aren't passed around the pews. Um, they are available to you as you enter and leave the sanctuary. We also have online giving for those um, who are watching on de our, our devices. And I think we're actually going to be starting to put the link to our website address. Um, and so where you, if you're watching online, you know um, where to give um, if the Spirit is leading you. So this is a time where our offerings will be brought forward. And we'll continue with our offering prayer. God our provider, <clears throat> God our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. 
receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And we have, a, we have a spiritual communion prayer for those of you who are watching on your devices and cannot physically eat or drink of Jesus' body and blood. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We continue with the communion liturgy for those of us in person. If you'd like Holy Communion at your seats, this is a time to lift up your elements for blessing and consecration. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come, take your place at Jesus' feet. And be to God. This is a time for those of you who'd like Holy Communion at your seat, that you take the host wafer, that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. In the blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink. And today, we will have communion at the font. So we will commune my left, your right side first, and then our assistants um, will move to the choir side. So you are welcome to come at the usher's instruction.
Please rise as you are able. And may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Generous God, in bread and cup you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And receive the blessing. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn today is Arise, Your Light Has Come.
in peace. Keep awake. Thanks be to God. And all God's children say, Amen. Yes. Yes.